welcome to this edition of Lounge TV. I'm Naomi Cook. I'm here at the View From The Top Art Gallery in Nottingham and I'm going to be talking to Josh Hart who's recently completed his MSc in Transport Planning during which he did some research into the impact of motor vehicle traffic on residential quality of life. So Josh, perhaps you could briefly outline the main findings of your study into the impact of motor vehicles on quality of life. Sure, thanks for having me on that today Naomi. Uh, what I set out to do in this research is to find out what are the quality of life impacts of our, our motor vehicle uh, usage today in Britain, uh, specifically in Bristol. And the reason I chose Bristol was that it has some of the highest levels of, of car dependence in the UK. Uh, we have some of the worst congestion. The average uh, peak time congestion speed is only about 16 miles an hour. And outside of central London, it's actually the worst in the UK. And we have some of the highest levels of car ownership. So I wanted to find out from regular people on three regular streets in Bristol, what are the, what are the impacts? How does car traffic impact their daily lives? And specifically, uh, I wanted to uh, replicate the work of a man named Donald Appleyard. Now, Donald Appleyard was uh, an urban planner, an urban planning professor at the University of California, Berkeley. And he uh, did a landmark study in 1969. And he chose three streets in San Francisco that were very similar apart from the level of traffic and he interviewed the residents and what he found was that the people on the, uh, the heavy traffic streets knew only a fraction of the number of people of, of their neighbors as on the light traffic street. So I wanted to find, you know, find out for 30, 40 years later would this effect uh, hold in, in the UK. So when you were doing your research, did you find that people were happy to discuss the effects of um, motorised vehicles on their quality of life? Uh, they were very happy to talk about it. I, I think in a lot of ways it's a subject that doesn't get discussed uh, very much. So to, to be able to uh, speak with someone about it was, was, uh, was something that they, they relished. Um, what I found was the same as what Apple Yard really uh, found in, in, the, in 1969 in his study, that uh, on these three streets in Bristol, the, the light traffic street with 100 uh, vehicles a day, the, the medium traffic street with uh, 8,000 cars a day, and the heavy traffic street with over 20,000 cars a day. And I, and I chose streets that were very, very similar apart from the level of traffic, that uh, people on the, on the busy street had only a fifth, about a fifth the number of friends on their street as those on the light traffic street. So what I found was that, as Apple Yard found in the, in the 60s and 70s, uh, today in the UK, communities are being uh, severely impacted by heavy motor vehicle traffic. And uh, uh, not only that, but that their people's home territory is diminished. I also asked people, I uh, showed them a map of their street with uh, the houses identified, and I said, please you know, point out uh, where you feel your home territory is on the street. And they said, well, what's home territory? And the way I defined it is the same way that the original study defined it, the area over which they felt a sense of personal responsibility or stewardship. And uh, what I found was that on the light traffic street, people would include the whole street, other people's homes, the street, the, their front gardens. On the busy street, they uh, more often than not, 19 out of 20 times, they only included their own house, their own rear garden, a lot of the time not even their front gardens uh, as part of their home territory. And so what's happening is as traffic levels increase, people don't spend time on the street anymore, they don't feel like it's part of their own territory and uh, they don't get to know their neighbors because if you don't spend time on your street because it's too polluted and noisy or, or dangerous, you're not going to get a chance to, to know your neighbors. And I think that's what we, what we found uh, in, in Bristol. And, um, and people, you know, as the, the publicity around the study grew in, in September, and I was interviewed on BBC around the, the country, uh, a lot of people called into these, to these stations and said, you know, I, I uh, live on a very busy street as well. I don't know my neighbors. Um, I, I'm, I'm irritated by the, the road traffic noise. I'm, I'm irritated by the, the, the air pollution on my street. Um, I, think, I think that far from being something that a minority of, of, of UK residents experience, that the, the impact of road traffic is widespread. I mean, in a, in a, a statistic is that 40% you know, of UK residents now are, are irritated by road traffic noise. Uh, and that, and that proportion has doubled over the last uh, three decades of the 20th century. So 
it's, it's a problem that's growing in scope as the, the level of traffic has, has increased tenfold since 1950. I mean, I think there have been major, major changes to, to the way our public spaces operate. And we need to uh, acknowledge those, those changes when we're talking about transport policy and where it's going in the 21st century. Your study is fairly critical of current approaches and it perhaps sees them as um, kind of self-defeating. I mean, for example, on one hand you're promoting cycling while on the other um, widening some roads to improve motor vehicle capacity. Do you not think that this is actually a, re a reflection of um, society's kind of two-faced relationship with uh, motorised vehicles in that Basically, outside the house, the road is noisy, it's full of irritating traffic noise and pollution, but um, equally, the road is also um, there, they want to drive on it and use it as they so wish. I mean, how do you get past that? I think you're absolutely right that we inhabit multiple roles within the, the, the transport world. Uh, on the one hand, you know, uh, we're, we're drivers. Uh, many of us are drivers and we want to use the road system. On the other hand, you know, we're residents and uh, we have to deal with the effects of other people's driving, the side effects. And uh, I mean, a good example is uh, a couple on Muller Road, which was my heavy traffic street with 20,000 cars a day, pretty much constant traffic. Um, you know, life on Muller Road is, is dramatically impacted by the motor vehicle. I don't think I can emphasize this uh, enough. Uh, the people that live on Muller Road don't uh, own pets because if they did, uh, every time they, they, they get a cat or a dog, it just takes once for the door to stay open and the cat or dog runs out into the street. They're obviously re very, very careful about young children as well because um, the, the safety, is, it, you know, um, the lack of safety on the street is, is a critical uh, impact on their quality of life. But many of them are drivers and because of the safety, uh, many of them feel like they can't they can't let their kids walk or, or cycle to school. So what I found was that people on the medium and heavy traffic streets would actually be, uh, would, would actually drive their kids to school more often than those on the light traffic street, even though the, the route to school was the same. So I think this indicates that people's perception of the safety of an urban area is affected by their immediate residential environment. So how do you think that local and central government could better deal with people's concerns about the effects of um, traffic and motorization? Well, I, I think that uh, we need to look at the whole picture. We need to rebalance our transport system. We need to provide the choices that, that, that people um, want to have, uh, improve public transport, make it frequent, accessible, affordable, uh, make uh, cycling and walking integral parts of the, the city's uh, uh, transport networks. Instead of having a cycling or walking officer where, where that responsibility is, is uh, marginalized, have the, the you know, the, the, the policy officer in charge, or the engineer in charge, uh, be responsible for cycling and walking like the way it is in, in the Netherlands. Uh, so, you know, I, I think we, we really need to, uh, the circumstances with, with, with global climate change and with oil supplies uh, in the future uncertain, I think we, we need a, a, a real uh, revolution in the way that we look at transport. And that is going to necessarily involve uh, changes to social norms, changes to our tax structure, changes to our legal framework, the way that we, uh, uh, um, the way that we uh, work with liability, uh, with, with drivers who have killed pedestrians and cyclists. I, I think that needs to be brought into line with the way they do things on the continent and the Netherlands.